Hello, Instagrammers. I hope I'm back. Hello, Instagrammers. Hello, Facebookers. Hope you can hear me. All right, we're talking fireplaces. Two and a half common problems that we get with fireplaces. And P.S. I'm Donna Hoffman, interior design advocate, here to solve your problems. Sorry, Instagrammers. We lost our feed on Facebook, so I have to re-hello and re-engage. Hopefully, you can hear me now. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Jill Keo. All right, so here at the Interior Design Advocate, we're all about making your life easier. Great products, strategies, and we teach it in a way nobody else does. But we like to come out here on Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, to share with you different lessons that we think will help keep you moving forward to beautify your home. And we get a lot of questions about fireplace problems. And I it kind of made a joke earlier, not a ha-ha joke, more like maybe a smirk or maybe an even, hey, what's wrong with this girl? Two and a half problems that we see constantly coming to us as questions. One is, yeah, I don't like your fireplace around. Another one is the height of your mantle. And the third one, or the other one, the half one, I'm going to save for last. It's a little surprise. That is called a tease. So let's talk about the anatomy of your fireplace first. So fireplaces, guys, really boil down to, you know, two key things aesthetically. I'm not talking about the inside, the flue to get, keep the smoke coming up your chimney. But, you know, you've got a firebox, and that's what contains the fire. And then you have your surround. Really, that's kind of what you got to know off the, off the lid. So your firebox, the, the thing that holds the fire, that needs to be surrounded by something that will not catch fire. Otherwise, you won't have a fireplace. You'll just have a fire raging in your home. That surround around your firebox generally is either done in brick, in stone, or in tile. Now, a lot of you complain that you've moved into homes and you know, you've inherited a fireplace and you just hate the surround. So what you need to know is it's so much easier to band-aid cosmetically those things than you realize. You can, on top of a brick fireplace, you can have stone, marble, granite, tile. You can have that affixed directly around your firebox. Usually you want to do about eight to 10 inches all the way around. Why? You want something to absorb the heat that that firebox is putting off before you get to, if you are traditional or transitional or even rustic, if you're doing any sort of wood uh, legs and mantle, you need something that interrupts that heat flow from firebox out to the rest of the wood, right? So, so much easier than you even realize to take that fireplace that maybe was done in the 1990s or early 2000s and you just don't like the bricks around. You can have a great wood surround added to that and just keep the brick. You can obliterate the brick entirely by overlaying, let's say, a marble surround and then doing a really cool, uh, cool buildup of, of legs and mantle. Or you can do a full stone surround and then do a really cool rustic um, mantle, maybe something in salvage. So I don't want you to get so panicked about, oh gosh, do I have to rip this out? Often you do not need to rip out. It's an overlay, not a rip out, which helps on budget. Now, if you have a very, very long oversized wood and over, uh, oversized brick and oversized hearth, that's where it can, you might be looking at a rip out to get rid of all of that extra brick. But even there again, it doesn't have to be uh, as big an interruption to your structure. You are going to be interrupting flooring, but sometimes a really, not sometimes, but a really good flooring group can do a match back to an existing wood floor, let's say, and they can add to whatever gets dis disturbed if you do have to pull out that hearth, okay? But there are things you can do without having to pull out hearth you can overlay on top of the hearth. You can do, I don't know, bluestone or flagstone on top of it. There's a lot that can be done. So when you're trying to reface a fireplace, you also look at painting some of you. Just beware that once you paint a fireplace, very hard to reverse that. So you better be sure that you really, really like that look of a painted fireplace. The other question we get is height of mantle relative to what? Flat screen. Now, this is a whole lesson on its own. You, you calculate your optimal viewing distance from a flat screen so that you basically you don't want your neck doing this, right? It gets sore to just have to look up. So that's why most fireplaces, the mantle wants to stop at about that 50 to 55 inches before you mount your flat screen. Now, please don't write me a hate letter if that's still too low for you or too high for you because I don't know how deep your seating is. So this is a very general figure that I'm giving to you. But think of this. 
if you're sitting on a 19 inch high sofa, most seats are 19, and then you're let's say five foot five, that probably puts, which is average, that probably puts your eye at about 50 inches or so. So that's the point of getting that mantle at about 50 to 54, and then you can start your flat screen right above that, okay? So I will tell you right now that I just did a gorgeous family room that has a beautiful fireplace in it, and the mantle is too high for optimal TV viewing. Because of budget, we did not want to rip it out, and we thought it was beautiful and worked for the room, so what we did was we put the flat screen on an arm that tilted, and that helps to alleviate some of the neck strain that happens. So if you find that redoing the mantle is just not going to work, then you want to do something with that, with the tilt of your flat screen. So not liking the surround on your fireplace, more manageable than you realize, and super, super common. Not being sure if your mantle is too high to absorb a flat screen TV. And what's the other bugaboo common, common fireplace question? And by the way, if you have a question that involves a fireplace in your project, please feel free to type that in. So when I'm done with this lesson, which will be in about another two minutes, I can take your questions live about your dilemma on your fireplaces. But anyway, the other dilemma that we hear about, so I said it's two and a half common problems, corner fireplaces. Okay. Here's a story with corner fireplaces, and I'll be brief on this because I know some of you don't have corner fireplaces, but if you do, they were pain in the neck. They're not going away. With open concept being so popular, and that's not going away either, um, corner fireplaces allow builders to get a fireplace in where there really wouldn't be room for one otherwise. The problem with corner fireplaces that drives people crazy is, you know, how do I arrange my furniture around this thing that's in the corner? Because people naturally assume that a fireplace is your focal point in the room. So, of course, you want to put your furniture around it. Here's the kicker with a corner fireplace. You need to accept that you're most likely going to have what's called a split focal point. So if you've got your, your diagonal fireplace this way in a corner and then your TV viewing wall abuts it, right, what you need to decide is that you have to honor what that flat screen need is. So you're going to include your fireplace in your space planning, but it very likely will not be the focal point. What is the option? The option, if you want to get your fireplace, your corner fireplace to be that focal point, then you're taking all of your furniture and popping it onto a diagonal. That is a hard look to pull off and pull off well, particularly unless you have a giant, like, you know, Soho loft space, right? Lots and lots of pass-through space around. You do start to make some odd angles to, for people to cut through and cut around when you have your furniture set up on a diagonal. I will tell you, I am not a huge fan of diagonals. I will say the upside of diagonal lines in design for furniture layout is that diagonal lines push things apart. So people can argue, well, I, you can make a room look a little larger by throwing in a diagonal in your furniture layout. Um, I have a wonderful one of my uh, delicious uh, design lovers uh, who's in my community who's taking one of my courses. She did a beautiful uh, job in her family room. And she did a diagonal lay-in of her furniture around a corner fireplace. Um, I had recommended she go another way, but she went with what she loved. And we, we made it work, and she made it work. And it's really, the room is, is coming along nicely. The problem with diagonally arranged fireplace furniture is that getting your end tables in the right spot and leaving enough pass-through space to enter the seating zone can get kind of strange also. And I, now I'm just kind of doing pantomime design because you would really need to see what I'm talking about for, to be able to appreciate this. So my simplest advice if you have a corner fireplace is to accept I'm going to have a split focal point. I'm going to have fireplace and also my TV. And that's where, how I'm going to orient my my furniture and I'm going to favor the TV and include the fireplace. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. If you have a question about a fireplace issue that you're having, something you don't like, something you're struggling with, feel free by all means to uh, send in a question. And my handy dandy assistant Katie just told me in this very high tech manner questions coming in. That means Donna, zip, zip it. Start looking at the questions, Donna Hoffman. All right, Katie, so I'm going to look at 
questions. Okay, so glad I found this thread from Elsa. Thank you, Elsa. I'm glad to be found. We love having you. Lori's saying she has a corner fireplace. I feel your pain, Lori, or maybe you're in pain. Okay, Mish is saying, I have a late 80s home, somewhat contemporary, lots of straight lines, with a traditional brick fireplace. I'm thinking of an overlay. Question is, I'm considering ripping out the brick on the floor. It's a gas fireplace. Thank you for that. If you're considering ripping out the brick on the floor to make it more modern, is that line of thinking correct? There's also a narrow path through the living room, so it would help widen the walkway as well. Mish, great question. Okay, here's a story. You're going you're gonna to need to drop, I know you're gas, but you're still going to need to do some sort of um, hearth drop into the floor. However, you can just lay in stone. You can just do a marble lay in. The thing I want, and, and, it's, and it'll just be a little bit above your floor. You didn't say what kind of floor you have. I'm guessing you have wood if you're a 1980s home. So your stone might rise above your wood floor ever so slightly, a nice bevel on that stone will really help you, Mish. It will look great, I've done this before. And the thing I want you to be prepared for, remember at the beginning of this Facebook Live, I said you've got your fire box, that's what holds the fire, and then you've got your hearth on the floor, and then the surround and your mantle, right? So if you are taking out a hearth, expect that now your fire box, which currently with the hearth, like if here's your fire box and here's your hearth, the fire box seems to kind of um, float right on top of that hearth. You remove that hearth, and now the firebox is really floating above the floor. Mish, you like modern design. No problem, but just be prepared for it. Now your firebox is floating a little higher as opposed to sinking down lower on the floor. Not a problem. So I think going with the direction you're talking about, Mish, would be great for you. Um, just be prepared in, in what I've just kind of warned you about, and you'll be fine. And I, I... Mish, I think, is, isn't Mish one of our students? Yeah, Mish, send, send in pictures in the private group. I want to see what you're working on for sure, but you're in the right direction. Okay, so that's good. All righty, good. All righty, so Margaret's saying hello. Mish is saying good to know. Uh, I don't see other questions. I see comments unless there's a question coming in on Instagram. All right, look at this. I can almost read Instagram. <laughs> Putting on the big girl panties to read Sonia. I have a mantle. So the TV is too high. I could put in a larger TV to balance, but the whole thing will look off. I have a picture. I don't know how to send. Okay, Sonia, um, if you're one of our, if you're in our one of our courses, you can send pictures in and I will look at it. I just do not have time on the public page to look at your pictures. And I'm just designing for too many people privately here in the Philadelphia and New York and New Jersey region, as well as all of our, my students. So I can't, I'm not going to dive into your pictures on, on the public page, but I'll take a question. So let me see if I can help you here. Uh, and certainly, Sonia, if you are in one of our groups, you know, you can send in pictures and get my eyeballs that way, as well as for the whole community. Here, here's the story. You know, you can only push architecture and say, screw you to the architecture so much. Architecture always wins at the end of the day. If you have a mantle that's way too high for, to accept a TV, and you're saying that you're I'm afraid to touch this phone because this thing could go flying. I have a mantle, so the TV is too high. The best thing I can tell you, if you are not willing to lower that mantle, which can be done, and it doesn't have to be a giant, you know, big, big line item hit to the budget, depends upon what else you're ripping out and what else gets disturbed, definitely look at doing some sort of tilt on that flat screen. It will help. Will it be perfect? No. This project I just talked about where the mantle's too high, Everybody on that project knew, look, we could either rip this out and absorb probably about 4000 in in construction costs to do a rip out and a rebuild, or we live with it now, we do the TV on that angle, and if at some point it's just not comfortable, you can always spend the money after the fact down the line. I always like to guide families and clients and students and design lovers who follow us. See if you can do a little less up front control the spend, live with something, you can always add something after the fact as opposed to just blowing the whole, you know, the whole Monty uh, on your budget right out of the gate. So I'm hoping that that helped answer you. I, you know, if your mantle is indeed too high, 
there's nothing you can do about it other than rip out or do something with the tilt, okay? So hopefully that helps you as well. So talking about mantles and fireplaces and fireplace dilemmas. So if you have a question and you'd like to put one in, please feel free to do so. I'm gonna scooch down and see if there are more questions. Bing, bada bing, bing, bing. Okay, Lori said, I painted the wall of my corner fireplace as an accent wall in a darker color so that my TV on the back wall was a less prominent visual and I hung a large piece of art above the fireplace. That's interesting, Lori. I'd, I'd love to see that and I think that's really an interesting workaround. So guys, what Lori did by painting the, the wall at the fireplace an accent color, she threw more weight on that wall and more reason for that fireplace to kind of have its moment in the room, even though she was orienting the furniture to the, 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 the flat screen. So that's an interesting workaround. I'd love to see that. Stacy Mullins is saying, Donna, I had a tile hearth, but changed my surround and removed the hearth. Because my gas fire because my gas fireplace specs had zero clearance. Is that a big no-no? Stacy, I'm not understanding your question. I had a tile hearth, but changed my surround and removed the hearth. Because my gas, because of my back gas fireplace specs. Because my gas fireplace specs had zero clearance, Stacy, I'm just not understanding. I apologize. So if you can send in a follow up, go ahead. But I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding you. Um, Baiza says, not a fireplace question. I need a bright neutral shade paint name that's trending in 2019 that can go with grayish and light gray floors. Baiza, I totally get that you would like me to whip a, uh, a, a paint color out of the air for you, but I don't know what you have in your home. You're telling me you've got grayish and light gray floors. That can mean half a dozen different things. I don't know what the adjoining spaces are, what your fabrics are. I would do a massive injustice or disservice, I should say, to start whipping out paint colors and having you commit to that, either paying a painter or doing it yourself. So babes, I'm going to tell you that unless I can see pictures of what you're talking about, I can't give you a more, a more direct answer on that. I'm sorry. I'm actually doing you a favor by not giving you a paint color. Trust me without seeing what you're talking about. I want to serve you well, I promise. Uh, Margaret, we just had someone, had someone, um, put a pull down bracket on the back of a TV. So Margaret, that's interesting. A pull down bracket on the back of a TV. As long as you're staying off of the heat source, right? Because most fireplaces will have specs, fireboxes, they'll want a certain amount of surround, eight to 10 inches usually, depending upon the manufacturer, a surround that will absorb that heat. So for you to then drop a fire, uh, drop a, a TV lower and closer to that heat source, you're making me a little nervous. I'm assuming you did it with the help of, a, of an expert, maybe a media expert, but I'm, I'm a little nervous hearing about it. But I tend to err on the side of conservative, and, um, and there you go. But, but it's, an, it's just an interesting idea. But uh, again, I'm not, if it's a working fireplace, unless it's one of those fireplaces where you just light candles on the inside of it, and then we have no problem with heat. But thank you for sharing that, Margaret. Um, okay, Nish is asking, okay, Katie, <laughs> I'm getting all these really high-tech things, pieces of paper. All right, this is a question. Um, Mish, before I take your follow-up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer another question from somebody on um, Instagram who hasn't asked a question before I start taking follow-ups. So this question is, how do you suggest decorating around a TV over a mantle? Who asked that question? Daydreamer Cottage. Daydreamer Cottage. Smart question, and I'm glad you asked it. So I... I would love to have pictures to show you. I actually teach uh, this in one of the modules in my design CPR um, course, where we just take a deep dive like a boss into accessorizing. And here's a story with accessorizing when there's a TV on a mantle. Unless you have a really deep mantle, like think Texas big mantle, right? Nice big legs and a big deep mantle. There's usually not a lot of room to add a lot around that mantle when there's a flat screen. Usually the flat screen sits on a lot of what would be the flue or over the mantle, right? Um, and you also don't want to block your TV and you also don't want to distract. So right now I'm working on a design build and we're trying to figure out how deep do we want to make a mantle in a room where there's going to be a fireplace over it. It's a, it's a beautiful tricked out lady study, really cool teal 
cabinetry. It's going to be gorgeous. But anyway, I'll show you pictures when we photograph it next year. And I said, listen, we don't really want a very deep mantle. Eight inches is fine. Six inches is great. And we're not accessorizing that because here's the thing you need to know. When you start to add height to an accessory, unless you're talking about candlesticks, as you add height to an accessory, you add also what depth, right? So if you want to get something on a mantle, I'm making this up, that's, you know, 20 inches tall, and then something next to it that's maybe 18 inches tall, making this up, how much footprint and depth do you need? So you start to need a lot of depth on that mantle that the flat screen is starting to interrupt as well. So personally, I do not recommend a lot of accessorization on mantles when there's a flat screen. We live in the 21st century. That flat screen is just a piece of life up there in, on top of this beautiful focal point. Um, certainly at Christmas time, you could do beautiful garlands and, you know, at holiday time, you can do pumpkins or little, little baby pumpkins or, you know, that kind of seasonal decorating for sure. But I don't tend to do a lot of accessorization on mantles and most luxury designers don't do a ton of it. It's usually it's either a fireplace that is designed with artwork and accessory or et cetera, or it's a TV viewing spot. Okay. So there you go. Hopefully, and if you have a follow-up, you can feel free to ask that. In fact, Katie is sending me another high tech. Boop, 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 boop. And this says final two questions. Because Katie knows I could stay out here with you guys forever, but we got work to do here in studio. So kaboom. Um Okay, let's see other questions that we have before I take follow-ups. Anybody who hasn't asked a question yet. Trisha, our 1951 home has a fireplace with black marble. Is that still in or should we change it during the renovations? Think black slate. Trisha, I don't have a problem with black marble. And quite frankly, we're working on a big project right now. And a couple of the fireplaces have marble surrounds. Some are Carrera. Some are French marble, and French vanilla, and some are also in a, in a black. So the nice thing about a black marble surround is, depending upon what else you're doing, you know, in the room, it just sort of recedes into the firebox. You're not making a statement there. And certainly it's great in a modern um, feeling, but also depending upon what you're doing with your, your legs and your mantle or just your mantle if you're not doing legs, um, I think it's a sleek look, so I don't have a problem with it at all. So I think you're good there. And so, yes, we are still specifying things like that. Last question to Lisa. Lisa says, I want to get some more education on interior design specifically to help me understand theory principles for a great basis. Which of your courses would be best for this? Lisa, since you ask, there are two great products I created. One is for dessert first people who are in a hurry. And other, others are for people who say, look, I got a room or two to do. I want to start from the beginning and move through this and just park all my confusion at the door. If you want to know how to do a room from scratch or even picking it up from the midpoint on, connecting spaces, um, decorating genius system, seven simple steps to great rooms. We call it DGS for short. That's where you want to start. I think it's a great product. It also, I teach design differently than most design teachers. I'm very logical. I'm, I'm really good for some reason at taking really creative, esoteric kind of what concepts and making it very linear. So you need no design background and non-designers really love our products. And you, if you go to our website, you'll see the great results our, our peeps are getting with this decorating genius system product. Then if you are a dessert first person and you, or you think, you know, I have a room that's just almost there and I just want to like fluff and puff it. I created a dessert first product called Design CPR, like the paddles, but CPR stands for creating perfect rooms. And it's all about how to facelift any room in 30 days or less. So with the holidays coming, Cookie Puss, you could be like so redoing those rooms 30 days at a time. And I could have titled Design CPR, How to Accessorize Like a Boss. I take you into our workshop here, our, our shop, our luxury design group, as if you were trailing me, accessorizing spaces just like a boss. But I knew if I took you just two steps further beyond just accessorizing, I could teach you a, a three-step system to perfect any room using almost entirely what you already own. And just adding new, if you feel like you like what well, you'd want to, you're in charge of this, not, not us, you, you decide. So 
Do they both work great together? They do. I still recommend DGS, Decorating Genius System, first and then move on to CPR. Do professional designers and stagers sometimes take our courses? They do, but I'm very upfront in saying, look, this is for non-designers. That's who I'm writing for. That's who I'm taking under my wing. Um, so, but people who are young in the design industry will take our courses. And I will tell you too that, and it always gives me goosebumps when it happens, but a lot of our non-designer design lovers, wise women like you, will sometimes take one of our, one of our courses or two of our courses and say, you know what, that's it. I want to go into design. Donna, how do I do this? So we love meeting you where you are, taking you on your journey, and definitely taking you under our wing. I was a design lover before I was a trained and award-winning designer, and um, I remember wanting something like this before I was a designer. So I made for you what I wish I had when I was standing where you are now on your journey. And I think you'll love also having our uh, private Facebook groups. They are amazing communities. Each course has its own private Facebook group. This way, everybody's talking the same language. Everybody's got the same information, the same skill set. And I just take you with this community further and further and further along on your project. And it's just wonderful. And because of the, I don't know how we do it, Katie. I don't know if I should pat my back or pack pat the backs of the wonderful women that we have attracted. My communities have a wonderful vibe in them. My private Facebook groups are supportive and energetic and just delicious. I mean, so much so that we're thinking of doing some sort of live meetup because we just love our peeps to pieces here. So, so that was long winded. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off like that, but I'm very passionate about what we're doing here. Okay. My lovelies, listen, we are, ugh. We're totally out of time. I got to go. I'm on deadline. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your follow-up question, but I wanted to get to everybody's first question at least, uh, to be fair. So um, I will see you next week. Next week, you know what we're talking about? <laughs> we're talking about accent walls. Paint? Wallpaper? Good idea? Bad idea? How not to screw up an accent wall? That is our topic next week, my lovelies. So see you here, 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, for how, I don't know, better title. We need a better title. Accent walls. Don't screw them up. Paint, paper, good idea, bad idea. There you go. We'll see you next Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. And until then, hugs and kisses from all of us. Bye, guys.